sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy morning when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light and the word, through water and the spirit, we recall Christ's death and resurrection. We share Christ's triumph over sin and death. And with invincible hope, we await Christ's coming again. Hear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us pray. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you have given the light of life to the, all the world. Sanctify this new fire and inflame within us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. Amen. The light of Christ rises in glory, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. As you are able, please stand as we sing together.
Jesus' rising from the dead assures us that we too have been given new life. Let us repent of our sin before God and one another, certain of God's mercy. All-knowing, all-powerful God, we confess that even on this most holy day, we are unable to believe in the victory over death shown to us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess our utter dependence on you, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Without your astonishing appearance to our ancestors and your stunning presence throughout the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us, Lord, the sins we have knowingly committed and those that we have done without notice. Transform us, Lord, that in every way our work and prayer will make whole what is broken and give peace on earth. Send us, Lord, into the whole world with great joy and celebration, proclaiming in all that we say and do, He is risen. Amen. By the grace of God and the witnesses of our ancestors, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is our rock and our salvation. Believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our response to the good news of God's forgiveness can be found on page 233 in your hymnal. And even before we start, I'm going to invite the kids forward, um, and you guys get to sit around so you can see Theo get baptized, because, you know, he is your brother in this church. I need you to act like the big sisters and brothers that you are to him, and so come on up here. Sit over here by the flowers or on either side so you can see him, and his mom and dad too, okay? Okay. Come on, hustle up. You can do it. I know you can. You guys have been jumping with the rabbit for days now. You can do this. There you go. This is much better than any old Easter rabbit, trust me. And do you know why? Because you guys are also children of God. And this is the time when we recognize that with Theo. 
although the minute I heard, I already knew he was. <laughs> so hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus, confident in his promises, we baptize those whom God has called in baptism. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session of the First Presbyterian Church, I present Theodore Gage Burgoon Long, son of Andrew and Katie, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Andrew and Katie, if it is your desire that your child be baptized, if so, please respond saying, it is. It is. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Theo by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Jesus Christ? If so, please respond with, we do. And through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, nurtures us in hope. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Today, we remember our own baptisms and we make covenant with Theo and his parents to nurture and support them in their walk with the Lord. As God embraces us within the covenant, I ask all of you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptized. You are invited to stand if you are able. And if you guys want to stand, you can stand too. And if you want to sit, you can sit. But if you want to answer, you can answer, OK? OK, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, respond with, I do. I do. And do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, please answer, I do. I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. With the whole church, let us confess our faith, saying, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten by the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of being, being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son spoken through the prophets, and we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. The Lord 
be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> Let us give, 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 give thanks, thanks and praise. We give our thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water that may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it, raise them to new life, and graft them into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God be all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And, Andrew, I'm going to ask that you give Theo to David. I know, you may have to give him your cross, too. Hi, bud. What's up? New people. New people. Theodore. You are as beautiful now as you were born and only going to get more so. Theodore Gage Burgoon Long, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, knowing that God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer is going to just think that you are the best thing going this Easter. In the same manner, I take this. I know it. Daddy's so good with all this stuff. <laughs> what do you think? You want a whiff? Because I know. <laughs> There's a little odor to it. <laughs> it's not going to be putting in the mouth. It's going to... <laughs> Theodore, you are sealed in God's covenant. God has blessed you and loved you fully. And just watching you this morning, it is clear to me how many brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and grandpas and grandmas you have. Yes, indeed. It is a joy to be here with this day. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Theo, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world for you, he lived and showed God's love. And for you, he suffered the darkness of Calvary and cried at the last, it is accomplished. For you, he triumphed over death and rose in newness of life. For you, he ascended to reign at God's right hand. And this he did for you, Theo, those who did not know it yet. And so the word of scripture is fulfilled. We love because God first loved us. You're going to be invited to stand and sing hymn 463. And I'm going to ask you guys, how many of you were here when Katie and Andrew got married? Were you here? I was here. Do you know that we sang this hymn that day? And now we're going to sing it today. As, Theo, as, as Theo's baptized. And we're going to walk him up and down, so he's going to forget all about what's happening up here. Come on, Dave, you've got to come walk, too. <laughs> can, you make, can you guys make a path for us? That would be great. If you want to stand up and see him, you can, and then you can make your way back to where you want to be. Please rise as you are able.
okay. Well, you go where you're supposed to be now, okay? <laughs> I don't know where that is. would like to invite forward now Rita Harmon, Kathy Miller, Sam and Shannon Robinson and their children, who will now be received into membership in this congregation. My friends, as part of the baptismal liturgy, you rejected the powers that stand in opposition to God, and you publicly professed your faith. Now, since it is your intention to unite in membership with this congregation, I ask you, will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Will you share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and your service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond with, I will, with God's help. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number brothers and sisters in faith. Together, may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ever-living God, Guard and protect these, your servants, with your protecting hand. And let your Holy Spirit be with them forever. Lead them to know you and to obey your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you forever in the life to come. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome our newest brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you. Let us pray. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the words of your Holy Spirit, so that in the hearing your word today, we may receive new life. Amen. I don't often think of hymns of thanksgiving happening in scripture outside of the book of Psalms, which is hymns of all kinds. But today's reading from the, from the prophet Isaiah, this is a hymn of thanksgiving, and I invite you to hear these words. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lord, lo, this is our God and we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited, and let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And then from the, the, the epistle to the church in Rome, <coughs> hear these words of Paul. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not 
claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you are able, please stand as we sing the first two verses of hymn 234.
reading from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. Once upon a time, an engineer died and reported to the pearly gates. After checking the list, St. Peter says, I'm sorry, but you're in the wrong place. So the engineer reports to the gates of hell and is let in. Pretty sure, pretty soon the engineer becomes very dissatisfied with the level of comfort there. In an instant, the engineer lays out plans for central air conditioning, flush toilets, escalators, and public parks with lawn games. By the time all the projects are completed, the engineer is a pretty popular guy. One day, God rings the gatekeeper of hell and sneers, so how's it going down there? The gatekeeper replies, hey, it's great. We've got air conditioning and, and good bathroom facilities. There's escalators, and we've all loved the new parks. Things are great. We can't wait to see what the engineer comes up with next. Perplexed, God says, what? You've got an engineer? That's a, that's a mistake. He should never have gone down there. Send him back up. The gatekeeper says, no way. We love having him here. We're keeping him. God thinks for a moment and in a stern voice replies, send him back up here or I'll sue you. Overtaken by uncontrollable laughter, the gatekeeper of hell says, oh yeah? Where are you going to find a lawyer? <laughs> Look, that's a terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> and I know plenty of lawyers and engineers uh, who are actually here today, <laughs> all of whom have many stars in their heavenly crowns. But year after year, Easter after Easter, no matter how much I study and pray and think, I struggle so terribly with what to say today. 
I start each of my Easter sermons with a joke because this story of Jesus rising from the dead leaves me utterly speechless. I just don't know how to understand and frame the story of our Lord dying on a cross, being buried, and then walking out completely alive a few days later, just as he said he would. I just don't know how to speak about something so unnatural as resurrection, as life returning to the dead, as miraculous as a great stone door being rolled away from the tomb when even modern equipment would have struggled to move it. Honestly, it's a whole lot easier to preach on Christmas, and that involves a birth by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know, my friends. Resurrection, it's a weird deal. According to Mark's gospel, though, finding the right words to say on Easter is something that God's people have been having a hard time with since the beginning. It's really a terrible ending to the story. The women go to the tomb of Jesus to anoint his body, and when they find out that he's not there, they run from the tomb in fear and amazement, silent, because fear has gripped them. I can't blame them, and I'm not sure you can either. The other gospel accounts of Jesus' life have much better endings. Jesus appears out of nowhere, he's dressed in all white, he's dazzling, he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. But not Mark. Mark's gospel just ends. There's no lilies, there's no trumpets, there's no fancy clothing. There's no resurrected Jesus. It just stops. There's an empty tomb, a man telling the women to not be afraid, and then a a little huddle of Jesus' disciples who are so afraid they can't speak a word. The general consensus among the theologians and the scholars is that Mark's gospel ending is intentional. It's left open-ended like that so that we can step in to continue the story of Jesus. I think that's a great way to read it. I'm just not sure that's the only option. You see, while Mark's gospel ends with silence and fear, the other gospels go on. And they tell us this great story of what happened after Easter. For instance, Peter was so disturbed by watching his friend die that he didn't mourn in his house or seek counseling. He went fishing. It was the only thing that he knew to do when his world had been flipped upside down. We also learned that these little communities of Jesus started to pop up all over. And in these communities, Jesus' people worshipped together and they ate together and they gave everything that they could to the needy. We also learned that men and women alike led these communities and that these communities set up really robust ministries to orphans and widows and the outcasts, those people that Jesus was especially fond of. Aside from a few great sermons in the book of Acts, what we don't see, though, after the resurrection, or actually here, is people talking about it. Instead, the early disciples immediately got to work, doing what they could to keep the Jesus movement going. They were so captivated by this itinerant preacher that they just wanted to keep his love and his message alive, even though he was gone. And that should be comforting and challenging to us. What truly matters today, my friends, today and in the weeks and months to come, is not that we have the right words to say, It's not important that we know theologically or biologically what happened to Jesus in the tomb. What matters most is what we can and what we are willing to do to keep Jesus' movement going now that he's risen. They say words are cheap, and I think that's true. So how will you and how will I live, live as resurrection people? In all honesty, it's low-hanging fruit. Living as resurrection people today is actually pretty easy. And I say that because stuff's a mess. We live in a world that's a mess. It may also be true that your house is a mess. Your job might be a mess. Your spiritual life may be a mess. And I'm not talking about dirty laundry hanging over the treadmill or a cluttered desk. 
I'm talking about the way sin and evil gets its fingers into everything that we do. I'm talking about the mess that is social media and its degradation of life and sense and reason. I'm talking about our political reality that's a mess where power is more important than people. I'm talking about the mess that is the worldwide economy that loves abuse and slavery and hunger and pain. I'm talking about the mess that is human nature, which while we have advanced, really loves it when somebody gets nailed to a cross. Things are a mess, but it's into that mess that we run. It's into that mess that we run as these people who have gone to the tomb and seen that it's empty. We don't have to say anything, but you better believe we've got to do something about it. So what do we do? How do we live as resurrection people in the world today? Well, let's hit those things I just said. Social media. Post pictures of your kids. I know I'm going to today. Share cat videos and cooking videos, but please, for the love of God, stop arguing with each other. Nobody's mind is going to be changed in 140 characters. The resurrection thing to do is invite that person to coffee. Start a human connection. Begin a relationship. Politics. Stop worshiping the government. God said a lot of really important things about that in the book of Exodus. Instead, pray for our leaders. Respect them, but always remind them, as Paul says, that no one is above the law of the Lord. Global corruption and death and greed and hunger and pain, it breaks God's heart. It breaks God's heart, but we can have a positive impact. We need to stop saying, I can't do anything about that. We need to stop saying, boys will be boys. The resurrection thing to do is feed Jesus' sheep. That's what he told us. He said, feed my sheep. And he didn't say to do it when we want to or when there's enough or when we like the people that we're called to feed. He just said, feed them. And death. Jesus rose from the grave so that death could no longer define who and what we are. The resurrection thing to do is to champion life, all of life in its weird and beautiful forms because all life comes from God and all life returns to God. Sounds like a tall order, doesn't it? It's not, though. The calling of Christian faith is instead to get on board with what God's already doing. And that's pretty simple. We won't be saved by what we do. Only faith can do that. But as we work for a more just and a more loving and a more peaceful world, a world of resurrection, we'll come into grace and life beyond our wildest imaginations. And it doesn't have to be big. God doesn't expect us to walk into the halls of power and begin to take stone off of stone. Instead, it can be as small as taking a pebble. A pebble of love, a pebble of grace, a pebble of forgiveness, and casting it out into the great waters of this world. No matter how deep that water is, no matter how wide, no matter how vast it may be, one stone causes a ripple. And one ripple radiates out until the whole water has been disturbed by love, by grace, by forgiveness. My brothers and sisters in Christ, he is risen. He is risen indeed. The tomb is empty. The women have run away, silent and in amazement. He's headed on to Galilee. He's headed to those everyday places where life continues its onward march. The power of darkness has been conquered by his death and resurrection. Sin is no longer the ruler of our hearts and minds. Evil has been revealed as the sham that it is. Death is a con, and we have been reconciled to God and to one another. It's not because we're worthy. It's because Christ is worthy. We are free. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So now let's go live like it. Amen.
response to the good news of the gospel, we return to God a portion of the gifts that we have received. As you are able now, we collect our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray together. God of grace, it is our delight and our devotion to give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this offering and our very lives as a sign of our gratitude and devotion. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. Amen. Please be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the feast of Jesus' resurrection, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. Through your victory, we pray to you. 
for pastors, teachers, and ministers, and all who claim the good news of Christ's resurrection, that we will be wise in leadership, humble in service, and fearless in the face of evil and fear. Through your victory, we pray to you. For the governments of the world and their leaders, especially the President of the United States, the Governor of Oklahoma, the Mayor of Enid, and the City Commission, that they will practice compassion and reject the politics that use death and suffering as means of control. Through your victory, we pray to you. For the earth, and that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. Through your victory, we pray to you. For the power and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge, hope, and hospitality. Help us to see them as the beloved children that they are, and help us to stop thinking someone else will take care of it. Through your victory, we pray to you. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. Through your victory, we pray to you. For our neighbors next door and all across the world, that together we may dwell in harmony. God of peace and justice, rain down your spirit on those places in this world where violence tramples your people and oppression snuffs out life. Through your victory, we pray to you. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Through your victory, we pray to you. Finally, O merciful God, we pray for ourselves. Help us to be changed that by what we have seen and heard today and allow it to reflect in everything we do and say. Help us to live as Easter people who sing Alleluia no matter what. Through your victory, we pray to you. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer and by the power of your Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is in, in his name that we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
lawyer, engineer, sinner, saint, faithful, unfaithful. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. And he's risen for you and for me too. So go now into the world in peace with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit upon you now and always. As you are able, please stand as we sing our final hymn together. peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share some sign of Christ's peace with your neighbor. <laughs> 